Jai Hind, dear children. Welcome to today's biology class. I hope that you have studied the topics that we have discussed last class, right? Okay. Last class we have discussed about the structure of human respiratory system, the organs associated with the human respiratory system, and their function. So we have the respiratory system for filtering out the nitrogenous waste from the blood. Today we can discuss about how the filtration of blood takes place inside the knee or how the urine is formed and is excreted out. Inside the kidney there shows two prominent regions, the outer cortex and an inner medulla. In these two parts there present numerous microscopic filtration unit called nephrons which is a structural and functional unit of excretion. Each nephron consists of a cup shaped upper portion called the Bowman's capsule, a prominent convoluted tubule and a loop of Henle and a distal convoluted tubule that leads to a collecting duct. A kidney consists of millions of nephrons and each nephron is about 3 cm long. So the structure and function of nephron. We have just discussed about the structure of nephron. So the structure of nephron. You can see the structure of nephron here. The nephron upper end of the nephron or head of the nephron consists of a cup shaped Bowman's capsule and this Bowman's capsule leads into a tubular structure or convoluted and folded tubular structure called as the proximal convoluted tube and followed by this proximal convoluted tube there is a U shaped bent which is called as a loop of Henle. And this loop of Henle has a descending and ascending lymph and followed by this loop of Henle there is a another convoluted tube the distal convoluted tube and this distal convoluted tube ends in the collecting duct. Now we can study about the function of nephron how function uh, nephron functions or how urine is formed. The function of nephron or the urine formation involves three steps. They are filtration, selective reabsorption, and tubular secretion. So, what are uh, the what are the function what are the steps involved in the urine formation? Filtration, reabsorption, and tubular secretion. As we have discussed, the nephron have a has a cup-shaped upper end, which is called as the Bowman's capsule. And there is a cavity inside this cup shaped Bowman's capsule and this cavity consists of a bundle of blood capillaries called as the glomerulus. Earlier we have discussed that inside the kidney there enters the renal artery and the renal vein. So this renal artery carries the pure blood. Okay. This renal artery which enters into the kidney have several branches or it has branched capillaries and these branched capillaries enters into each nephron's Bowman's capsule and inside this Bowman's capsule there forms a network of capillaries and with the help of this capillaries or this glomerulus the filtration of blood takes place. The first step of urine formation is the filtration of blood which is carried out by the glomerulus and so called glomerular filtration. In this process that is glomerular filtration the blood enters into the Bowman's capsule through the blood capillary known as the efferent arteriole that is the branch of renal artery. So the blood enters into each Bowman's capsule through the art or blood capillary called as the efferent arteriole which is the branch of a branch of renal artery and filtration takes place and after filtration the blood exit from the Bowman's capsule through another blood capillary called as the efferent arteriole. So 
the afferent arteriole carries the blood with nitrogenous waste materials and this nitrogenous waste materials are filtered inside the Bowman's capsule with the help of glomerulus and after this filtration the pure blood exit out from the Bowman's capsule through the efferent arteriole. This efferent arteriole emerging from the glomerulus form fine blood capillaries or fine capillary networks around the whole renal tubule of the nephron. Now the inner wall of the Bowman's capsule see you can see the inner wall of the Bowman's capsule and the walls of the blood vessels or the glomerular blood vessels inside the Bowman's capsule are very thin. So the Bowman's capsule's inner wall and the walls of the glomerular network are very thin and are selectively permeable. What is selectively permeable? That means it allows the walls of these two allows some molecules to exit and enter into. Okay. So both these walls allows the water molecules, ions and some other sugars and some other small small molecules from the blood to pass into the walls of Bowman's capsule. So some of these materials are allowed uh, from the glomer glomerular walls to enter into the Bowman's capsule and this thus filtration is possible. So here the blood is filtered finely through these membranes, two membranes and so it is considered as the ultra filtration. So once the waste material is filtered out into the Bowman's inside from the Bowman's capsule, the blood free from these waste materials goes out from the Bowman's capsule through the efferent arteriole and now the filtered out waste from the capsule is called as the glomerular filtrate and this glomerular filtrate which contains the waters and so many other molecules uh, is forced downwards into the tubular part of the nephron. Now when this blood exit out from the Bowman's capsule the blood continuously flows from the renal artery into the cap Bowman's capsule and again filtration takes place. So the, the filtration takes place continuously and this glomerular filtrate is forced towards the tubular part of the nephron and this glomerular filtrate contains water molecules, sodium chloride, potassium ions, glucose, amino acid, keratinine, urea, etc. So the glomerular filtrate contains so many substances. So now glomerular filtration is over and next part is next step is reabsorption or selective reabsorption. So during the flow of these glomerular filtrate which contains a huge amount of water, sodium ions, potassium ions, chloride ions, glucose, amino acids, urea, etc, etc. Through this long convoluted or towards this long convoluted tube, reabsorption of some useful molecules or materials takes place. Some useful materials like glucose, amino acid or whatever useful materials the body needed will be reabsorbed from this tubular part into the back into the blood capillaries. So this arrow indicates that the diffusion of or transfer of some useful molecules from the tubular part back into the blood capillaries and this process reabsorption. Nearly all the nutrients like glucose, amino acid, and some of the sodium ions, chloride ions and about 70 percentage of water are reabsorbed here in this area or in this proximal convoluted tube. So the first two steps that is glomerular filtration takes place in the Bowman's capsule 
and the reabsorption of so many molecules from the tubular part into the blood capillaries takes place into the proximal convoluted tube that we have discussed. And this reabsorbed materials contains potassium ions, sodium ions, chloride ions, amino acids, glucose and 70 percentage of water is reabsorbed here. And one more step, one more process takes place in this tubular part that is tubular secretion. What is it? Tubular secretion. So, in this tubular part, secretion of some selective substances like uric acid, potassium ions, hydrogen ions, ammonia or some pigments which is not necessary for the body are secreted from the blood capillaries into the, into the tubular part of the nephron again. So, what is tubular secretion? The process in which certain substances which are harmful and not needed for the body like ammonia, potassium ions, certain pigments, hydrogen ions, creatinine, uric acid etc are secreted from the blood capillaries into the tubular part of the nephron okay are added up in the filtrate that is flowing through this nephron tubular part of the nephron he is called as the tubular secretion and this tubular secretion helps to maintain the ionic balance and ph of the blood the next part is the after the proximal convoluted tube it is followed by the u-shaped fold in the tubule and this u-shaped fold is called as the loop of henley this loop of henley or henley's loop has an a descending limb and an ascending limb so in this portion or in this loop of Henley's minimum absor reabsorption takes place only the reabsorption is very minimum so only some amount of reabsorption of materials takes place and this loop of Henley is followed by another folded tube called as the distal convoluted tube so when the fluid reaches this distal convoluted tube there again some of the ions or some of the other molecules are reabsorbed again into the blood capillaries and some molecules are secreted into the tubular portion. So, here in this distal convoluted tube, some of the ions and the amount of water which is most necessary for the body are reabsorbed again into the blood capillaries and the molecules which are not necessary or toxic substances if any are there in the blood capillaries are secreted into the tubular portion or distal convoluted tube. How much amount of water is reabsorbed here? The amount of water reabsorbed into the blood capillaries depends on the need of water for our body and also on the amount of waste to be excreted. So, more water and dissolved waste will produce more urine. Actually, urine contains 5 percentage of waste and 95 percentage of water. So, for this 5 percentage of waste, 95 percentage of water is there for the formation, for, there for the formation of urine. Now, the remaining fluid in the tubule which contains urea and uric acid and some unwanted dissolved waste substances reaches the collecting duct in the kidney. There are so many collecting ducts in the kidney. So, in this collecting duct, so many tubular part of the nephrons reaches the collect or reaches the collecting duct here. The remaining fluid which contains urea and uric acid and some unwanted dissolved waste substances reaches the collecting duct 
through this distal convoluted tube and this is in the form of and this now this filtrate or this fluid is in the form of urine the human urine contains about 95 percentage water and 5 percentage of nitrogenous waste that is urea and uric acid etc and few other substances which are not necessary for the body so what are the substances excreted out in the form of urine it contains urea sodium uh, unwanted sodium chloride unwanted potassium ions hydrogen ions creatinine and some amount of water and uric acid the formation of urine involves three steps which are the glomerular filtration which takes place in the bowman's capsule selective reabsorption which takes place in the convoluted tubular part of the nephron and the tubular secretion which also takes place in the tubular part of the nephron and at last whatever waste substances nitrogenous waste substances are there in the blood which is collected in the tubular part and at last collected in the collecting duct the blood devoid of nitrogenous waste from the capillaries is collected to the renal vein and exit out from the kidney there are so many collecting ducts in the in the kidney and from this collecting duct this urine enters into the or the urine is collected into the ureters and the ureters from the kidney through the ureters the urine is collected in the urinary bladder and from the urinary bladder when the urinary bladder is filled there occurs an erg erg to urinate so this erg will uh, whenever it fills this message will reaches the brain and the brain will control the passage of urine and the sphincter muscles they are present in the urethra relax and the urine is passed out from the body so this is the excrete is the process of excretion takes place in the humans in certain cases if kidney failure occurs that is the condition in which the kidney do not function properly so in that condition the filtration of blood could not be possible properly in such cases the waste will accumulate in the blood itself and the concentration of urea and the nitrogenous waste increase in the blood and it leads to certain malfunctioning of body now in this cases that particular person is recommended to do dialysis have you heard about dialysis okay we can discuss about dialysis now an artificial kidney is a device which is used to remove nitrogenous waste products from the blood through the process called dialysis one Artificial kidneys contain a number of tubes with a semi-permeable lining suspended in a tank filled with dialyzing fluid. 2. This fluid has the same osmotic pressure as blood except that it is lack of nitrogenous wastes. 3. One line connected to the artery is connected to the one end of dialysis device where the blood is collected. from patient for filtration four during this passage the waste products from the blood pass into dialyzing fluid by diffusion five the purified blood is pumped back into the vein of the patient which is connected to other end of the dialysis device this is similar to the function of the kidney but it is different since there is no reabsorption involved normally in a healthy adult the intake filtrate in the kidneys is about 180 liters a daily however the volume actually excreted is only a liter or two a day because the remaining filtrate is reabsorbed in the kidney tubules we can discuss about the excretion plants as plants are living organisms 
they have to carry out so many metabolic activities to sustain their life and all these metabolic activities create some waste in the plants inside the plants and this has to be excreted out excretion in plants are much simpler than that of animals as they as they are stationary and also they need only some amount of energy and plants do not have any specialized organs for the removal of this waste the plants use different methods for removing this waste from their body in plants during photosynthesis oxygen is produced as a by product and it is used for used during respiration and carbon dioxide produced during respiration is used up during photosynthesis excretion is carried out in plants in following ways the excess gaseous waste such as oxygen carbon dioxide and water vapor are removed through stomata in the leaves and lenticels of the stems as you have studied plant cells are having comparatively large vacuoles and many waste products are stored in this vacuoles some waste products are stored in the leaves and fruits and they are removed from the plant body as the leaves and fruits fall off plants get rid of excess water in the form of water vapor by the process of transpiration in some plants waste products are stored as gums and resins in the old xylem in some plants when a portion of stem or leaf is cut off you can see sticky or oily substances oozing out from that portion and these are the excretory products stored in the old xylem plants also excrete some waste substances into the soil around them some plant waste are very useful to human beings such as rubber latex gums resins and essential oils like eucalyptus sandalwood oil etc rubber latex are used for making tires gloves etc and the transparent resins are used for making varnishes and adhesives and also for some therapeutic purposes so children today we have discussed about the filtration unit of kidney that is the nephrons its structure and function hemodialysis that is the removal of waste from the blood with the help of artificial kidney and how the plants excrete their waste products i hope you all have understood the topics that we have discussed today now read the textbook properly and do the prepare the notes and the assignment so children this chapter life process over in this chapter we have discussed about some important life processes that is nutrition respiration transportation and excretion in humans and also in other organisms so children i hope you all have understood the concept of this chapter now study it well okay thank you